Hey guys, Brent LeBlanc here, bringing you another look development guide. In this tutorial, we will be covering how to make and use Arnold lights and some of their special properties. Let's get started. We're going to be using this portrait lighting photography guide uh, for traditional photography that is very applicable to 3D. Link in the description. Okay, so to get started, I've got this scene here that has Michelangelo's David. There's this scan library called uh, My Mini Factory, and I think all of them are free, or the majority of them are free, but they're just a bunch of scans from museums around the world. So I just found this um, head of Michelangelo's David uh, scan and then imported it into Maya. Link in the description. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of go over what my layout is here a little bit. Um, before we make some lights. So I've just got over here is my, this panel is just my camera view. And then I have uh, docked my attribute editor here. And then if you go up to windows, rendering editors, light editor, it'll bring up this menu, which will have the light editor and it should have property editor in it so that I can have easy access to both. And then I have my uh, render view on the right hand side. And one of the reasons why I have this light editor is it's got some pretty cool functions to it. First, I'll make a new group and let's go ahead and name that. Let's make a AI area light so you can see it's here. You can also go to Arnold, lights and area light, it's the same thing. So I'll click this group, make our area light. And one cool thing about uh, this little menu is that it has open the look through window for the selected light source. And what that does is it opens up a brand new window that you can use to position your light. It's just a little bit easier way to um, view where your light is pointing. When you click on the light, your property uh, editor will show you exposure, intensity, and its samples. First thing, let's turn this light on. So I'm gonna start rendering. And let's start out with like an exposure of 10. Okay, so now I'm gonna start orbiting around. Okay, here we go. All right, so some things to consider for the quality of the light is going to be the size. Your scene scale matters because the light fall off um, changes depending on what your scene scale is. So I have this set to centimeters and everything is kind of real world scale. I have a, a human scale model that I use that is a proper size. I think it's a little less than two meters. Tried to scale the head of David to be about that. I actually don't know how big this this real sculpture is, but it doesn't matter. We're just pretending that it's about human scale. Your light fall offs and intensity um, is based on real world scale. Okay, so um, going back to scale, the light quality changes depending on the size of the light. Okay, so you can see this light is about the size of his eye. So it's a pretty small light source. But one thing to remember is that the exposure is set to 10. The light source is pretty small. The spread is set to one. That means that it's gonna take that exposure, it's going to distribute that exposure uh, in 180 degrees from the center of that light. Um, so from that, that plane. And then as you start to bring the spread from one down, it will start focusing like a laser. So it'll get more and more focused. So the intensity will rise because more of the exposure is being um, focused into one direction until it becomes like almost a pin. So I'm gonna leave the spread at zero. I'm just gonna increase the size of the light. So what's happening is, is that it's, redistributing that exposure energy across the size of this square. So it's it's pulling out that intensity and it's gonna make it um, less intense at the beam source and it'll start distributing it more out, but it'll still be in the shape of the light. So it's like a, a it's still like a laser, but kind of less intense because it's being um, distributed and that's when I have normalize on when normalize is off it decouples scale and exposure if we continue to increase the size of this area light but keep the spread the same it'll keep 
spreading out that energy so that we'll get a similar result um, because it's got a lot more distance to shoot energy out of. Now it's like the spread is still at zero, but it's just that the light is uh, spreading out. Uh, it's almost like um, diluting water with food coloring. So like when it's like this, it's like one drop of food coloring versus one drop of water. But I, as I increase the amount of water, like a thousand drops of water versus one drop of food coloring, then the, the, it gets much more diluted. Now, I guess that's the way you can think of it. So the size of the light source is something you should always consider and spread being the um, angle fall off. So we've gone over light scale and exposure, how they are linked together um, and what spread does. And also the distance. So as I, the closer I am to the object, the energy is going to be more intense. But as you back away from the object, there's going to be a uh, light fall off. So the beam is getting bigger because you're further away from the object. It's the same as like if you shot a laser at a, an airplane. The, the size of the laser is really small when it's like, you know, hitting your garage door. But if you shot an airplane with a laser, it's the, the beam is not um, constant. It, it, gets, it gets wider. So the sa same thing happens with all light sources. It starts to spread as the farther it gets away from the light source. All right, let's actually get into making this light look like this Rembrandt softbox. Okay, so we're just going to look overhead here. And I'm going to try to line up say something like that. Let's render that and see what it looks like. All right, so softbox is going to be pretty diffused light. I assume the intensity is probably higher too. Let's try 15. No. I'm going to back away a bit. All right, so I'm trying to get that shape, that little triangle shape. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with this pedestal. I'm going to make this not shiny. Okay, before we get too much into the other light setups, I want to go over light filters and how they are used. And these are really useful. All right, so let's try to do like one of those kind of film noir uh, type looks. They have like really strong cutters. What you can do is you can shape this light really, really easily. So with these light filters down here, you get down to add here, or you can do it through this add filter here. So I'm gonna, there's two here. So there's one that's called light decay, and that's going to allow you to actually control the fall off of the light. But there's also this light blocker, which is really versatile. So what it will make is it'll just create this little transform. So we'll call this blocker. What you can do with this, take it out here. So you just select that little transform. And right now it's set to box. You just take it, place it where you want, say half of his face. So if I turn it off, it does nothing. If I turn it, as I'm turning it up, you can see that it's starting to block light wherever that bounding box is. So I turn that up to one, that means that the density is full. So anything that's inside of this, this box will get zero direct light. So it's gonna get indirect light from bounces but it's not gonna get any direct light. So there's a couple modes you can do, and you can also do some ramps and stuff. This is basically the fall off um, of, the bo of that box on either sides. So the top and the uh, left and, or the other sides. And then this is the roundness. So basically um, it's like rounding off the corners. So, and then there's a couple other geometry types in here. So if I go to sphere, now it's a sphere and I can feather the edge. And there's also cylinder, which is exactly what it sounds like. It does a similar thing, it's just a shape. The one that's interesting, um, that's a lot different than the other ones is plane. Like a, the, other, the other ones are kind of like, you can kind of think of them as like a cloud, um, like a, a, a dense cloud that's like, covering light that's inside of that 
but this more acts like if you actually were on set and you had a light blocker and you were like scooting it around to like cut light in a certain shape or something. So let me turn that. Let's make that sharp. And I'm going to make like a, like a cut, like how they do with like in Casablanca or whatever they, let me go to my, my light editor. Cause I want to see what, what the light blockers. Do. Okay. So it's starting to cut that anything that any light that hits this shape, it just turns it off and then I can add a second blocker. So let's add another blocker. So blocker two. And let's turn it into another plane. Little slice that you would see in those like noir movies. So you can see what it's doing. It's like doing the same thing as if, uh, I think these are called flags in traditional um, production or live action or whatever. So whenever, anytime that you're flagging the light, so you're just like, putting like a piece of cardboard or something in front of the light. And you can do this with like barn doors or what, whatever, whatever you were uh, using. Um, so now that that shape is, is getting darker, it's because that there's just a little sliver of light that's moving through that. So what we could do is we could go back to that light. So if we knock down that spread, we're going to get a much more focused beam inside of there and there's going to be less bleed. And there's two ways that you can make that softer. You could either do it with the, um, the light spread, or you could go into the blocker itself and you could use this height edge. And that's basically gonna make it from like a really sharp piece of cardboard to like something that's a little softer. All right, so let's go back into this light. I'm just gonna turn up the spread a little bit. So I'm going to make a new area light. Let's light up that backdrop. Do like 15. Okay, so I've got that that backlight there, kind of cutting out a silhouette. And then I've got this raking light across the eyes here. Say that I wanted to get like a little rim on his hair. And the tricky thing about this is if you did it without a like a card or a cut or something, maybe you only want it on his hair. And then you kind of want it to stop here. Like it would be difficult to like position the light and then like keep dragging it up and down. What you could do is you could use these light blockers to like say, I don't want it to hit the pedestal or like I want it to start fading off around this area. So what we could do is um, let's go to our light editor, click on this Rembrandt softbox, even though we've, okay, that's more appropriate. All right, so let's do like a rim that's going across uh, the back of his head like this. Uh, so I'm just going to select that light group, make a new area light. And I'm going to just go over here and select David so that I can hit F and it just circles around him. Something like that. Let's turn the exposure up to like 12. And then I want to take the, um, the spread and I want to focus that beam a bit. Say I only wanted to just hit it here. So what we can do is we can go down to this light. All right, so we're gonna do this light filter, transform node, and then just start knocking down. I can just knock it down entirely. And then I could just feather the edge a little bit. Just say that you wanted to sculpt your, your hit a little bit. So what's happening is it's still got bounce which, you know, that doesn't actually look too bad. Um, but the direct hit is um, getting cut so that you have more of a, a rim in this, just this area. I wonder if there's, there, there should be a way to like just invert this density. I wonder if you could, let's see. What, if, what happens when I do a negative number? Let's see if it flips it. My guess is that it's gonna light up here and it's gonna be dark there, but yep. That's exactly what it does. So you can do negative density, which basically just inverts the channel. Well, that's really handy actually. So say you just wanted um, everything inside of this box is the only thing that's being lit. 
Okay, so we've gone over uh, some of the basic attributes of the lights. We've learned to use uh, blockers. And uh, down here is uh, you can shut off different visibility on different channels and uh, learn how to use spread and exposure. I usually, for intensity, I just use that for, um, like I said before, just like basically an on off switch. So, okay. So the whole point of this, um, this light editor is it's a bit like Arnold's utility uh, light manager. It's really similar, but it actually, this one has less functionality uh, than this one does because what's cool, is, I mean, this is, I used to use this a lot, um, but the one that they have is actually really good. Uh, it, it's it's a, a, like one of the reasons is that you can shut off lights this way or you can you can disable them or isolate them which you can do with this over here. But what's really nice about it is that you can snap um, the lights to geometries or locators and this little open look through window thing is super handy. So like if I click on that light, it just opens up a window. Oh no. All right, let me just set up that scene again. One of the really nice things um, about using the light editor is that, uh, here, let me save this. <laughs> uh, one, one of the nice things about using the light editor is I actually used to use the uh, Arnold's uh, light manager. I mean, still use it sometimes, it just depends. Um, but the, uh, in the window, Windows render uh, light editor, the one for Maya, it actually has a little bit of functionality that I really like. So uh, you can set up these, um, you can set up these light groups. I have this this group, this light group disabled. It's still there. It's just disabled. So I can make a new group. Drag that outside. Try to do this one here. Pretty simple. Position one light above and directly in line with the center of the subject's face. Notice how there's an even shadow under the nose. It's best that the shadow doesn't reach all the way up the upper lip. Okay, so it's kind of like this little shape. So let's try to get that shape. Just going to do a, a couple different light setups here to, sh to show you uh, some of the things you can do. And then uh, you try some of your own. So here we go. Alright guys, that's it for this video. So please like and subscribe and hit that bell button uh, if you want to get notifications for future videos. And uh, I will see you in the next one.